In the hot Nevada desert, Sabra cares for Micromax, who's seriously injured. Tension fills the air as she informs him that the 198 are stuck in a bunker, and it's close to exploding. The clock is ticking, and their escape hangs in the balance. Sabra discovers Micromax's unexpected shape-shifting ability as sentinels threaten the 198 trapped inside a bunker. Amidst the tension, they share a light moment about his altered appearance, with Micromax in pain, asking Sabra to avoid from making him laugh. Close by, Shatterstar clarifies to Domino that he didn't intend to kill Micromax only to disable him. Despite Domino's reassurance, Bishop's intense expression suggests he holds Shatterstar responsible, challenging the attempt to shift blame. Inside the bunker, the 198 face a serious situation as they attempt to force open the doors. A countdown reveals the bunker's approaching self-destruction in 55 minutes with a polite apology from the Department of Homeland Security. Communication is cut off, leaving Toad and Outlaw struggling to unlock the doors. Scalfunter, confident in Sinister's cloning, remains undisturbed. Meanwhile, Arclight senses vibrations on the door, hinting at external efforts to break in. The tension inside the bunker intensifies. Outside the bunker, Iceman, Cyclops, and Bishop team up with a sentinel to breach the doors. Bishop stops the attack, understanding their efforts are pointless. Iceman jokes about a scratch, but Cyclops recognizes the impossibility of opening the doors in time. Bishop contacts Val Cooper, urging her to convince General Laser to stop the self-destruct sequence. The fate of everyone inside the bunker hangs on her success, as failure means certain death for those trapped inside. Inside the Pentagon, General Laser, now in custody, maintains a smug smile as Val Cooper challenges him. Unbothered by his situation, Laser takes satisfaction in the upcoming decrease of the mutant population, taking charge of their future despite his military career ending. Val Cooper, determined to obtain shutdown codes from General Laser, dismisses his attempts to unsettle her. Uninterested in exploring his hatred for mutants, she says people with narrow views aren't worth understanding. Unbothered by lasers saying no, Val choose a more direct approach, pulling out a crowbar and threatening to smash his kneecaps one by one unless he cooperates. She sees it as a statement of fact, not a simple warning, as she approaches him with determination. Defying General Laser's laughter, Val swings the crowbar, shattering his left kneecap. Laser cries out in pain as she declares her intent to go for the other kneecap. Realizing the stakes, Laser warns that if he's dead, he can't provide the needed codes. Unmoved, Val states that nobody cares about his life and threatens to crush his skull unless he gives her the information she seeks. The tension rises inside the interrogation room. In a weakened state, Laser requests his laptop, prompting Val to signal Colonel Reyes to get it. During the wait, Laser mocks Val about her supposed interest in Bishop and desire to have mutant offspring. Suddenly, Laser starts struggling to breathe, pleading for help. Val, doubtful, questions if it's a trick, but Laser breathlessly says that D touched him, adding a mysterious twist to the situation. In a nearby room, Johnny D, disappointed that Laser gave up quickly, looks at his homemade doll that looks like Laser. Expressing frustration, he mentions his mutant brother and how, if it were up to him, they'd have cut Laser's mutation out before he could walk. Johnny, with a simple twist, snaps the small laser's neck, suggesting a tough approach to handling mutants if they had a single weakness. In Nevada, medics work urgently to save Micromax's life. Archangel offers his healing blood, hoping it can make a difference. Sabra stays by Micromax's side, eager for the treatment to work. Meanwhile, Bishop gets a call from Val Cooper, learning that Laser is dead and they are missing the necessary codes. Micromax is transported for surgery, with a hopeful outlook. Bishop, blaming himself, updates Cyclops on the serious situation. Cyclops proposes a risky plan that requires trust, acknowledging its potential danger. Bishop, curious, asks for details, and Cyclops hints at a risky strategy that might save them, but carries significant risks. Bishop directs the one crew to step back while he and Cyclops plan to recreate the powerful discharge that damaged the Sentinel earlier. Despite concerns about testing Cyclops's unchecked power, they proceed. Cyclops insists it's the only time to act and orders the rest of the X-Men to leave, but they disagree, wanting to stand together.
As Cyclops releases his power, Bishop channels it into a massive energy blast, but it appears ineffective against the blast doors. The situation grows tense as their plan hangs in the balance. Iron Man and Miss Marvel arrive just in time to help Cyclops and Bishop. Iron Man recognizes the risk of their powerful energy and tells Miss Marvel to aim carefully at the doors. With careful coordination, they coordinate attacks with the Sentinels. Iron Man says the government spent a lot to make the place strong and challenges everyone to prove him wrong. As power blasts combine, the intense energy exchange transforms Cyclops and Bishop, linking their nervous systems and radiating energy. Inside, Outlaw urges the others to retreat into the tunnels as the group effort unfolds. The door explodes open after a powerful joint effort. Iron Man helped the weakened Bishop, but Cyclops struggles to control his overpowering abilities, urging everyone to keep their distance. The 198 leave the bunker as Cyclops struggles with uncontrollable powers. Iceman tries to help, but Bishop insists they can't leave Cyclops behind. Meanwhile, Leech breaks free from Lorelei and heads towards Cyclops. Despite warnings, Leech, convinced he can save Cyclops, charges in and deactivates his mutant power. Miss Marvel grabs Leech as the X-Men retreat. A massive explosion destroys the bunker and the surrounding area. Mutants, heroes, and troops watch the explosion from a safe distance, briefly united by the shared experience of surviving the close call with death. The next day, Bishop discusses the situation with Val Cooper, highlighting the unity that prevented harm to mutants. When asked about his relationship with the X-Men, he admits ongoing tension due to his choice to support one in going after the 198 mutants. Val Cooper invites Bishop to join one, emphasizing upgraded powers and her committee's role in safeguarding mutant civil rights. Xavier's will transforms into an open community for mutants, resembling areas similar to where Native Americans live. One Sentinel team remains for protection, but without monitoring or restricting the movement of community members. The changes aim to balance security and respect for mutant freedoms. Bishop thinks about Val's offer to join her in building the mutant community. While Val questions him about believing in monsters, Bishop dismisses Emma Frost's teasing, urging Val to ignore her. Val admits to doing questionable things, and Bishop reassures her, saying there are good and bad people but no real monsters. In a holding cell, Johnny D smiles with an evil look, hinting at a more sinister presence.